The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted and you yourself a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. So the blessing of the candles and the um, this reading, this beautiful reading of the presentation of our Lord following the the prescriptions of the Old Testament law. Jesus is the light of the world. You know, let that reality, let that concept, let that idea sort of sink into you. Jesus is the light of the world. How difficult it is to be in darkness, right? We we're familiar with that at least a little bit. We remember Hurricane Zeta still, don't we, right? Like three days of darkness, you know, not the, not the big three days of darkness that people prophesy and all that, but Three days of no electricity. I think that's what we had here. Some of you had a little longer. But you remember kind of what it is to sort of fumble around in the dark, right? And, and the light of the world and this contrast between being in the dark and being in the light. Our Easter candle, the symbol of the light of Christ. The candles that you held today, a symbol of the light of Christ. The candles on that altar are there as a symbol of the light of Christ. The candle next to the tabernacle back there is a symbol of the light of Christ. The church is filled with the symbols of Christ being the light of the world. And this light comes into our hearts 
I mentioned a few weeks ago, maybe it's been months ago now, that when we are going toward the light, then we see our flaws and our faults and our failings more clearly. When we turn away from the light and we're walking away, then everything, we, we fail to see our flaws and our, our challenges. And I use the example of your windshield, remember this? Okay, when you're driving into the sun and the sun is low in the sky and your windshield is filthy, isn't it? You know, you see all the dust and dirt and bugs and everything else. But when you turn away and the sun is behind you, oh, it's, man, miraculously clean now, right? But it's not that it's clean, it's that you don't see the dirt because you're not going towards the light. Jesus is the light of the world, and he comes to enlighten the darkness of our soul, not to put us down, but to do what? To heal and to cleanse, to purify, to make new. So today, as we remember the light coming into the darkness, as we remember the obedience of Jesus following the law, we pray that we would be courageous enough to walk toward the light. We pray that we would be, I pray that I would stand in the light of Christ and let the healing power of Christ's light illuminate my heart and my mind. Take your candles home and remember the gift of the light of the world. And this simple, simple prayer, Lord, Enlighten me, Lord, I want to stand in your light. Jesus, you are the light of the world. Enlighten my heart.